we, we went through this like discounting phase for a, a very, very big brand we had, and now they're going through, they train the customer to know that they're gonna be a brand new drop and gonna be a brand new sale every single month. So um, we weren't able to get like consistent. Kind of like Supreme, like just new products every month? Right, but instead they're going exclusivity with high price, but we're going buy in bulk at a discounted rate to move okay. the product. Okay. Right, so now we're training that everybody, like they're not gonna buy anything full price. They're not gonna look in and purchase on just a random Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. They're gonna mm -hmm. wait until the end of the month when the deals are hot, and then all of a sudden, now all of our customers, those look like values go way down. Mm -hmm. Everyone's a discount buyer, and our AOV just goes through the, through the floor. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I think from, from what you were originally asking, like free tools, things that you can really do, oh, yeah. like I was a couple leveraging. <laughs> I know we can hang out off topic. Yeah. Uh, I think, they, and going off the idea of like discounting or, or doing stuff like that, like kind of tons of different apps and plugins on Shopify. I don't know if most people here run Shopify stores, but I think they're just a great platform that, I mean, I think it was a couple years ago, Nick was showing me some stores that just like, they seem super hacky of like, you got flames going on, the counter's <laughs> going off, you got Wheelio popping in. Um, but I think stuff like that, it's like some of them are free, some of them are five, ten dollars a month. So just like trying some of that, see how you could kind of boost your sales. Um, there's some stuff in that sense. And then just other platforms to, to learn, or I mean not platforms, like um, training tools, like things like ad leaks, like are you guys doing what, it's like one dollar to sign up and just mm -hmm. try it? For 14 days. Yeah, for 14 days, it's like, I mean, free, yeah. a dollar. Yeah. So. Yeah. Can't get better than that. Uh, yeah. One one really cool tool actually that's free that uh, I came across the other day. Uh, one of the moderators in my group, uh, Maxwell Finn, uh, super super awesome guy. Uh, he posted a video about this uh, program or app called uh, Biteable, um, B I T E uh, able Biteable uh, dot com, and it's uh, like an app where you can make uh, videos, but it's not like all the other apps that make videos. It's not like Animoto or Magisto or any of those. Um, this one uh, has like some really really cool. Uh, animations going on and you can just like plug in a review or plug in an image for your product uh, and it whips you out like a really nice looking video uh, and, uh, and it's what was it called again? Uh, biteable. How do you spell it? Uh, bite able. Bite. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it could be a weird spelling but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just biteable.com I guess it's like little little bites you know okay. so it makes like little little short ads like the ads are you know three to ten seconds something like that um, but they're they're really really good looking ads and stuff that I uh, you know, is, is, it's, a, it's a feed stopper, ultimately. Um, and for that, for, for free, you can't, can't go wrong. Cool. Nothing. Nothing? All right, all right. Not um, giving anything away for free. Nothing, nothing, nothing. You can sign up for <laughs> my online course. Next question <laughs> is, uh, what's, what's good ad copy? Because um, you need to get ad copy to get their attention, right? For sure, for sure. Ad copy for me is, I'm, a, I'm huge on emojis. I know people are talking about, like, they're going to get rid of emojis. Emojis are flagging bad content, bad user experience. It's a thumb stopper. Like emojis at the beginning, that's accept, uh, access, that is acceptable. I'm not saying like the copy that you know. I know you would write. Yeah. It's like five fire emojis and then like the peach booty emoji. Where yeah. I know you. Um, that's not. That's not applicable. <laughs> booties on sales. <laughs> fire, fire booties. <laughs> so what would you write? So technically, it would be here's here's a little story. It depends where you're on the funnel, right? Okay. On top of funnel prospecting. We're telling a little bit of story. I like to always lead as much as possible with the founder story because I want them to be bought into a little bit of what's going on, right? So for instance, if you're selling Sack and Go, like that's your yeah. ass on that camera talking about like, this is a community that I really, really care about. Here's the things that you're gonna get. And then all of a sudden it's a little stack of which people like to lead read listicles. Yep. It's like you can get high level content, uh, good food, good uh, good commentary. Okay. And then like where to sign up with a little bit of LinkedIn bio. Good thing we're recording this right now. So <laughs> whatever it might be on a future ad. But it's, it's, it's simple for them to digest at the top of funnel. And as soon as the top, as soon as they're done with that, those bullets that you laid out, those are clear value props that then you need to like flush through, which then would be like maybe a testimonial of this gentleman talking about like, wow, the content's unbelievable. I need a testimonial from him. Or okay. maybe it's like the, the lady's talking about the content was great. I've never heard it somewhere else, depending which funnel you want to put them through. Got it. Uh, I find a few uh, work really well, like, like Nick said, uh, telling a story uh, is really, really powerful. Um, and it, it's essentially like advertorial style um, in the ad copy where at first you're going to highlight their pain point uh, and uh, agitate it a little bit, uh, then kind of mention there's a solution and then ultimately uh, I lead them to your site as the solution, um, uh, the specific sol solution. Uh, and then once you get them a mid funnel or a kind of bottom of funnel, uh, we, we'd call it, uh, then I like hitting them with testimonial copies. Uh, where it's essentially just like your ad copy is literally just like a testimonial. Now I love this hoodie. It was so awesome. Uh, thanks, like Mary from Texas. 
Uh, and then, uh, you know, all hoodies, 20% off, today only, you know, discount code, whatever, buy now, link. Um, so super simple, like one call to action at the bottom, uh, and that's it, and that seems, uh, like, that's my favorite one, probably. Yeah, I think the ad copy is always the, the tricky one. People always want to, like, what is it that's working? Like, I got to try a whole bunch of stuff, and it's, it's tough to, like, you make a little variations and you, you see no difference. So it's like, yeah. how do I make copy that really works? And we get into this, this argument all the time with clients where they're, uh, really sensitive about their copy, and so that's where it's like, are you trying to be yeah. sensitive to the copy because you want it to match the brand, or are you trying to be sensitive about the copy because you want to match the potential customer? And so finding where it aligns, and then putting a copy that works in the different parts of the funnel. It's so like, yeah. like Tim was saying, like reviews, like five stars, even after that, playing in with emojis, we see that working. Just kind of how you can be as thumb stopping with the copy, even though it's like, what is this going to do? Is this going to distract from here? I think somebody posted something really. Funny, I saw last night. It was a uh, just a little box and said, "Your eye goes here first, then here." Oh, I saw that here. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, someone posted it yeah, in, yeah. in uh, ad buyers. I was like, yeah. "Oh my god, I love this!" I sent it to all of my designers. Like, I think 11 p.m. last night, <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, "This is amazing." Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. It's like if you think about it, your eye goes to the big creative first, and then it's gonna go to a little bit of the text at the bottom, and then it's gonna go or like the headline, yeah. and then it's gonna go to the text at the top. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So just thinking about that and how you can build it the correct way. Okay. Yeah, I'd argue like. Is copy as important? Is copy, I, I wouldn't tell this to a copywriter for sure, but is a creative more important than the actual ad copy itself? Because I know me personally as a consumer, I'm watching video, and then if I need more context, I'm like, all right, where am I searching? Okay, no, I think those are very actionable advice. Now, I want to open this up to the audience. We'll take three questions before we get to our next panel. So, who wants to go first? Jason. Um, I want to ask this question to make a few days ago in our interview. Um, is that does the five dollar per day method actually work? Like, can you debunk that? Because everyone on YouTube is you know promoting that. Like, can you give some dollars into that? I already gave this answer, and I said this is absolute bullshit. Um, I but I did but then again I did post a strategy that I was doing one dollar ad sets, and this was uh, before, right before and around Q4, and the ideology around it is this: it's like you're telling Facebook I have this much budget, right? I have very little dollars to spend. It's going to do its best to give you its best consumer or best purchase, which you might get one or two. But then, like the optimization period, which I know Tim's going to talk about as soon as I hand him the mic, <laughs> is you need X amount of purchases or X amount of like whatever action you have in a seven-day window, or even in like a full 28-day window, for it to quote unquote optimize. Again, I don't know like why it works. Or sometimes it doesn't work. But if you have if you're strapped on cash, my suggestion is higher budget, much higher budget, and then really low bid caps. Or target at target cost, just so you can. Now, there's times where they won't spend, of course, but you can still go a little bit more of like a width scale versus then a vertical scale. Uh, so that's a good question. Uh, sometimes I've seen that the five dollar ad set budgets do work, um, but it's kind of hit or miss. Um, Facebook doesn't have a whole lot of uh, wiggle room there, uh, right? They have to ch really, really choose who they're going to show your ad to. Um, so, uh, so, so yes, it, it can work, but generally in the short term and not the long term. Um, because uh, if you don't get enough conversions, and let's say that the few sales that you do get, let's just say they all came from like Alabama or something, um, off the top of my head, uh, then Facebook is going to start showing all your new $5 assets uh, very heavily to Alabama. Because um, uh, they think that's where your converters are because you didn't give them enough data to say, hey, I have people in New York and I have people in Florida and, and all that. So you're kind of doing yourself a disservice in that way. Uh, and then uh, uh, one thing, I'll give a little method though that, uh, that I learned at my last mastermind from one of the guys that came, uh, which is like a new $5 ad set budget method, you know, but it, I, I tried it and it worked pretty good, um, is uh, you basically have, you have your campaign and then you do like 20 or 30 or 50, like a bunch of ad sets, all with just uh, one or two ads in each one. And then you set a lifetime budget on those ad sets for like three or four hours out. So uh, just three or four hours from current. <laughs> Uh, and you only do one or two dollar budgets uh, on each ad set. Uh, and then once the budget ends, it's spent that one or two dollars, then you do it again, another three or four hours out, another one to two dollars per, per ad set. And after you've done this uh, for a few days, the ad sets that is, you know, they would have spent maybe ten dollars each by now, something like that, uh, then uh, you just pick out any of the ones that got sales and then just keep doing it with them, basically. Uh, and it's like a little, a little cool little hack that I found that works pretty good. Yeah, I think that the tough part with the, the five dollar ad sets is once you find it working, like how do you yeah. kind of scale that? And so it's like you, you double up to ten. Yeah, you, do, you double <laughs> up to ten, and then it's like okay, now I just have a normal ad set that's yeah. like at the budget I wanted in the first place. So that's where if kind of going off of Facebook, they they're I mean the engineers working there are 
way smarter than us. They build an algorithm that actually works and it's fundamental. Like we've seen it work for tons and tons of brands. So it's like trying to hack that to put together, okay, like now that this, this has some information, this $5 ad set's winning, let me just duplicate that a hundred times. It's like, okay, now we're starting from scratch again. It's like, how's that gonna learn? How's that gonna be different? Um, and it does work for some people, but that's not to say that maybe if they just kind of went with a full audience or like a larger budget in one audience and let the algorithm kind of like build and learn to it. I know Facebook tries telling us you need 50 conversions for it to optimize. Two years ago, it was 10 to 15. I don't think anything changed. They're just... No, it was 50. They were just wrong. They were wrong. Oh, they were wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it's also just a sales tactic. They just want you to spend more money. So trying to find ways to get that conversion optimization, kind of season the pixel, uh, get enough purchases, and then it'll start, start working. Awesome. Cool. All right, you can, yeah. What's um, your name? Uh, Chase. Chase, okay. And so I was actually gonna ask, um, basically regarding a $5 budget, um, I was thinking about a gate, because obviously when you shut off an ad, it loses that gate. Is that important with your ads and like your ad sets, um, you know, seeing that continued engagement on certain ads? Um, because at the end of the day, you want that engagement because ultimately that, you know, kind of sure. has a waterfall effect. Sure. So if you shut that out, all that engagement's gone, and that disappears. So I'm curious as to like what methodology did you guys use? Like you obviously see one that has high engagement, and like okay, well let's leave this one on, even if it's not necessarily like converting. You know, there's For sure. elements of like keep it running before talking. You yeah, know, so. we we've seen that sometimes. It's it's this the, the change the dynamics of Facebook and consumer behavior. It's like a year or two ago, like engagement was the thing. It's like oh my god, this ad has so much engagement. People are just gonna buy because they trust that. I think consumers getting smarter. We've seen ads that have. Tons of engagement do really well and, and do terrible. Yeah. We also see ads that have no engagement that are crushing from a click conversion. So we're like, okay, this isn't just like view traffic that's getting us purchases. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if, if you are in a, a spot where you see like your ads that do get better engagement perform better, um, I'll pass it over to, to Nick because he actually showed me this two years ago when day one when we started is like I knew nothing about using existing posts. We were just running duplicating, um, and so you can keep that engagement. I learned that from Tim. So I, I, oh, working, we working, all learned. Yeah. Working, working with Tim, so I spent about, it was the best paid internship I've had in my entire life. Yeah. Um, no, it was sharing post ideas with sharing the, the, sharing post ideas with sharing the engagement. Now I think there's actually a change where you can choose to transfer engagement. It's like a literally, but I don't know if it's rolled out to all ad accounts, but it'll be able to roll it across multiple ads. Um, some industries you don't really necessarily want engagement. Like I know for some verticals you're like, I don't want these people talking to each other. Like that's a big thing. And if you have a, a team that's able to respond to these these engagements, then they turn into like your own like, proactive sales force. That's yeah, that's, right? that's, that's, that's seen that happen a lot where like you'll actually get an actively engaged client comes in and swoops in and uh, tries to, you know, lower the, the insanity that happens on so. I literally I did a talk on like stop running PPE or stop running PPE thinking that they're going to come come into a conversion mm -hmm. because you're, you're literally telling Facebook hey I want you to get me people that are going to engage with this it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to buy mm -hmm. now like the reverse of this is like if they come in at a conversion funnel top of funnel why can't we run video views or PPE or reach for the second touch point and see if it can be a little bit uh, a little more cheaper on the second and third touch I haven't spent enough money to figure this out yet, but I, that's something that's really on my mind right now. All right, think last that's... question. Oh. All the way in the back. What's your name? My name's John. John, uh, okay. Yeah, so I've been following you guys for, for about, like, I think a year or so. So I respect your work, respect your value. If it wasn't for you guys, you guys contribute so much to the community. And, um, and yeah, I just want to say thanks. You guys got me started with my company. Um, but so John's company is? Can I, can I plug you? I'll plug you. Ecom Vids, they're local. They make mm. they make a bunch of yeah. That's, yeah, I've heard of that's yeah, yeah, cool. it. Um, John actually went to high school <laughs> together. Um, he's a little older than me, and they crank out content that we need at every step of the funnel, right? So it's very necessary. So thank you for letting me talk about you. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Uh, Nick has a cool beard. I always actually and you I was like, dude, you're so Stuff. <laughs> I do love Asians, though. <laughs> yeah. um, but, uh, so, <laughs> my question is, um, so one, do you guys have tools to automate custom audiences and lookalikes? Or is that the manual process? Manual. Manual? Yeah, monthly. You guys do monthly? B you, it has to be, because say, say we just come out of Q4, right. like those are different consumers. Like there's no way I can pull that and make it. Make it like 
an actual look like audience to run Evergreen. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of custom audiences, like building out every single possible custom audience based off of days, things for like a day partner, not day party, but like number of days, like do you have a do you have a process for that and you guys knock that out right off the bat for your clients? Or is that something I do it like immediately. Yeah. Uh, literally like one through ten percent of every single audience I have, page engagers. Uh, uh, video viewers, I mean, literally like every audience I can make, I do it right when I set up my ad account. Right. So then I like set up all the ads, uh, and then I go set up my audiences while I'm waiting for my ads to be approved. Because right. uh, sometimes those audiences don't backdate very well, right. um, so I don't want to miss anybody coming into the funnel and being able to retarget them. So yeah, I generally just set up literally everything right off the bat. You may not actually end up using all of it, right. um, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we're having to set like reoccurring tasks just because you need to be Refreshes consistently. We use a tool called uh, Glue.io. Mm -hmm. um, I know Clavio is now Clavio is allowing you to like populate their own audiences back into Facebook. Mm -hmm. Glue's right behind them on this as well. Um, so there, you can pull purchasers of specific single products. Yeah. It's it is pretty manual at this point. But I, yeah. I someone should create that ad. Yeah, no, 100%. Everyone on the job was like, dude, someone's got to come up with this system. <laughs> and I hate creating little likes. And I hate like creating custom audiences. Um, but my other question is, you guys have experience with video retargeting, and basically like um, that, that's even more manual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's like okay, how how granular do you go? Right? It's like okay, someone watches fifty percent of a ten minute video. You know, do you include three hundred sixty five days? Do you do three, five, seven, fourteen, thirty, and like really break it down so that you're really pinpointing the message, and then excluding anybody who's already watched, you know, you know, ten percent of the video or whatnot. So you're only getting a really targeted funnel of people. Do you guys have any experience with that? Yeah, I mean, there's tons of ways to do it. It's like, it, I think it all comes back down to like, if I were to segment out every video or finding this and that, and like working the equation back to, okay, how many people are in this audience? Facebook again doesn't make it as easy as they used to where you could like create the whole audience on a custom one. It's like, okay, you've got 20,000 people in this audience. It's like, okay, well, 20,000 people in this audience and my CPM is on average $10 I can work back. Like, what would my, how much would I have to spend to hit all yeah. those people? And so you just like do that math out in your head on, through Excel, and I love Google Sheets, and just, you can figure out, put all that stuff together, and be like, okay, this audience isn't big enough, I'm gonna burn through it quick. Uh, like a lot of times we were just like, you know, let's take all of our past <laughs> engages from Facebook, so it's like your 365 days, people that have engaged with your Facebook page. Right. And we do Instagram, we're like, okay, like this is a 20,000 20, audience, this is a 60,000, we try running, we're like, this should be like, warm traffic, not cold, and not like super, super like hot, but it's like somewhere in that middle. Right. And, uh, and we just thought it didn't do well. You're like, this doesn't make any sense. And we also exclude your purchasers, past people that have been to the website. It's like, maybe that's too far of a touch point. So then it's like, let's break it down. Let's go 30 days and let's do it 90 days. And kind of just seeing what works. Again, every kind of business, every audience is gonna be a little different of how they interact with it. So just like thinking through that. I, I think the big thing that we kind of get stuck in um, is like, as marketers, we think too much in our own lane of like, okay, I know the product, I know it really well, you need to put yourself in the point of view of the customer. And just like totally like try wiping your head. Like you think this ad is gonna be fire? It's like, give it to your friend that knows nothing about it, like, hey, what do you think of this? And they're like, dude, I have no idea what's going on in the product. Things are flying through, like, I couldn't even read this, like. I don't even know what you're selling. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. This, this hoodie, I don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> $50, what? Yeah. Uh, uh, so on, on, on this one still like, Coming from the agency standpoint, we, we try to build efficient processes as much as possible. Now, if you're an individual brand running like that one brand, right. they your buyers can have time to build the segments of audiences for a second and third touch point. Sure. At that point, then you should probably sit down and ID it around. If you're only watching 50% of this two minute video, like what is that cr crucial, crucial things that you need to communicate in the first section of it? Totally. And I mean, you as a content creator, like you know you, like, we, you make social ads, so you're jam-packing things in the first five seconds, right? Yeah. So, I hear you on this. Have, have you seen those new reports where uh, you can see actually the exact waterfall of where your users drop off in the videos? Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really helpful. Super helpful. All right, unfortunately, to end this panel. All right, all right. Okay. Last so question. As a new, What's your name? Danny. Danny. So as okay. a new Facebook ad buyer, what objective should you be using to get people to come to your site and get the most bang? Purchases. purchases. What's, what's your objective, I guess? To sell a product or? Yes, sell product. Are you selling goodies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got competition here. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. 
we I used to firmly believe like stair stepage from like at a car or page view at a car purchases, but at this point like you only want buyers. Facebook will give you literally people the freaks that add to just a car consistently. Okay. Well, the thing is, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say that the the best thing is purchases for sure. It used to be like a year or two ago bidding on add to carts worked. Uh, uh, better, let's say, um, but uh, in, in some cases. Um, but uh, but if you're bidding on purchasers, then everyone bidding on purchasers gets those people first. Then the people bidding on add to cart get like what's left over, like not the purchasers. <laughs> those are already paid for, right? Uh, then uh, uh, then people bidding on view content get all the add to carters and purchasers are gone. So you're not likely to get any add to carts really. Um, so really, it's just because it's an auction and people are already buying those purchases. So. Uh,